My name is Michael, and I'm a member of the Board of Trustees here at Peakland United Methodist Church. And my purpose today is to review the uh, current state of our parking lot and why we need a project in order to uh, help uh, tend to some of the issues that we have discovered out there. It would be good to review a little background with regards to the parking lot, just to familiarize ourselves with what has been done in the past. It has been a discussion of the trustees for many, many years. And for one reason or another, priorities, exp the expansion we had, the debt service, programs, we haven't been able to do a major work in the parking lot area. However, there has been things done over the years. Uh, we have uh, resurfaced drive lanes. We have patched certain areas. Um, and we have added some additional asphalt to our entrances to shore up for the big, heavy um, truck that comes in to pick up our dumpster. So there have been some things done, but we really haven't looked at the parking lot in a holistic standpoint to, to see really what things are out there and how to extend that life of the parking lot. So three years ago, uh, the trustees appointed a committee to assess the condition and obtain cost estimates for various options and make recommendations. Uh, the people on that committee were Jim Tallian, Rich Judy, Jim Burris, Ed Frieza, and myself. Uh, this presentation will, is a summary of that committee's work and the recommendations shared with the trustees and the finance committee. Current condition and, and contributors. There are four major contributors to the condition of our parking lot today. The first one is it's 40 years old. That park in the main parking area that we have today that's across from the fellowship hall was installed during that project. So we're talking 40 years old of asphalt now. And if you uh, need to understand about asphalt that the sun will drive off the petroleum oils that are in the asphalt and as that does as that happens, the asphalt becomes brittle, you start to get cracking, and of course that's a, something you will see in our parking lot. Uh, we had uh, trees in our islands, which were a requirement of the city to have a canopy in there, and that, those trees grew to humongous size, and they uh, started leaving the asphalt and going in, leaving the uh, center island and going into the asphalt and it caused uh, the heaving of the asphalt and also the curbing so there's been damage done from the trees now we've taken those trees out currently to prevent any more damage like that uh, the asphalt base the asphalt in the base uh, are not adequate for the newer heavier vehicles back in 1984 when this uh, fellowship hall was uh, done vehicles were a lot smaller and a lot lighter We've now got SUVs, a lot of those coming, and trucks, much, much heavier vehicles. And the um, increase in the vehicle traffic from the preschool for the drop-off, which is every week from September into May, uh, has that traffic going through the parking lot. So, And they use all of the parking lot. Uh, if you've been over here, you can see that all of our parking lot is, is getting that traffic. Um, so, 40-year-old asphalt installed with Fellowship Hall addition. We have advanced stage of cracking that's uh, commonly referred to as alligator cracking because if you look at the back of an alligator, you'll see those kind of little squares. That's, that's why it's referred to that. That cracking leads to grass and weed invasion, and that also works on, to a detrimental effect on the, on the asphalt. We have the initial stages of pothole development and shredding of chunks of asphalt. As you get those cracks and moisture gets down to the base, you'll get some sinking. Vehicles drive over it, the chunks come out, and now you've got a pretty good pothole. We have uh, a pothole out there right now and the potential for others to start. Uh, the moisture penetration to the stone base leads further damage when you get into the winter the moisture, the freezing and thawing, starts working on that asphalt and moving it and cracking it. Talked about the trees from the islands. That's from the invasion from the roots from these big trees trying to get 
the nutrients and the moisture that they need. Uh, they're going out, and as they go out, they cause the asphalt to be pushed up and crack more. Um, also, the other thing that comes out of it is now you've got uneven surface, surfaces, which from a standpoint of walking through the parking lot can be an issue that we want, want to take care of. Uh, the fractured curving and up, upheaval, um, you know, the curves are just, they break and then they push up and we, we have to recorrect that. Poor drain, we have some poor drainage. We did an, a survey out here with uh, um, Burton Profit and they identified the uh, elevations throughout the parking lot and identified that we do not have proper uh, drainage in certain areas and that leads to the ponding that we see during rains that are in front of our fellowship uh, main door from the parking lot. Yeah, they also identified that the narrowness of our main entrance coming in from Boonesboro Road. Uh, it's wider at the road, but it narrows down significantly as you come into the church. With the larger vehicles that we have passing through there at time, you get two vehicles, it gets pretty close. So uh, that's one thing that came out of our survey. And um, they have, and I talked before about the heavy, heavier vehicles and trucks uh, than what the original pavement was designed for is leading to that. Um, I want to I want to say that this all wasn't the committee that went out there and looked these, at the parking lot. We uh, had uh, paving contractors in here. We had people that do resurfacing of uh, asphalt things. We had arborists, arborists out here to look at. Uh, our islands and what can we do uh, in that respect and we had other uh, contractors out here from a concrete standpoint to look at the curbing and what would be done there. Uh, civil engineer, an independent civil engineer looked at it and gave his assessment of what the condition was and then of course the surveyors that came out and helped us with that. Um, so we looked at all the options and we had all this input from the experienced pro professionals. Uh, here are some of the pictures. I'll drop through these. You can see the pothole in the main parking area right now. Um, here's a patch that was done in the sanctuary loop, drive-through loop. So it's some of the work that had been done, but you can see, look at the cracking outside of that. So it's, it's progressed further. Um, this is Gorman Drive entrance, and there's some cracking in that area that we would like to address. It's pretty hard to see because of the darkness of that, but there's cracking there that we would go after and patching. Here's a picture of what the tree root damage did. You can see the, how the asphalt's heaved up, making the surface uneven, and that the curbing is elevated. Uh, just the, a drive lane from the main parking area, that's what I, you call alligator cracking. Uh, here's a picture of the weed infiltration and grass. Some more pictures of cracked asphalt. So I'm basically covering a, a lot of area of that parking lot right now. I'm going to show you that the cracks are pretty pervasive. Uh, here's the drainage issue, the ponding in front of the fellowship hall. And we would address that by changing that elevation. And the way reason we can do that is if you see these gutter drains here that came from the gutters facing the parking lot, those have been eliminated by rerouting, the, putting in a new gutter and rerouting that gutter. And this shows the rerouted gutter system where we pick, pick up all the drain lines and bring it down, further down from where the doors to the fellowship hall. So that's given us the ability now to raise the elevation of the asphalt going towards the uh, playground raise it there to give us more elevation to the street. This is just showing uh, the upper lot near the playground and how the water comes down and makes that turn and heads on down towards Boonesboro Road just to give you a flare for the, the amount of water. Every one of our parking lot drive lanes feeds into that main entrance. This picture right here is showing a problem we've got from these heavier vehicles coming in with the preschool, this is the loop where they drop off the children and pick them up. And as they do that, uh, they're driving um, 
close to the grass, but the heavier vehicles are causing that asphalt. It wasn't designed for the heavier vehicles causing it to sink. That now creates a pond on rain, and if you're getting into winter weather, another potential for ice, uh, which we want to eliminate that, and that would be in this project. So here's a, here's a written scope of uh, what we're looking to do. The parking and drive lanes installed as part of the fellowship and sanctuary additions um, will be uh, removed. And I list the, what the project includes there, but basically they're going to mill out the old cracked asphalt and then replace it with the fresh asphalt. Um, some repairs to Gorman Drive entrance and the preschool drop-off circle. Um, now there's some things that uh, have to happen as well. We have to get the, cr the cracked concrete curbs out, so that, that's uh, removal. And we also have uh, small curbs that are on the end of our parking lot that face Boonesboro Road that are uh, gonna have to be removed in order to do the repaving. So those will be replaced with new ones. So that's, that's in the scope. But when you look at what's the contractor he got in his, uh, his responsibility, he's got all the excavating, milling, and hauling. So widening this entrance here on Boonesboro will be a part of the uh, paving contract. He'll have to come in and widen that out. And then he has the uh, concrete contract as well, and he will um, uh, supervise putting in the new curbing wherever we have curbing that we have to take out. Uh, so he's got the excavating, the milling is taking out the old asphalt, hauling that away, uh, paving the new damaged curb removals and replacements. The tree replacement, that's required by city code. We have to have that canopy, restore that. So um, we have in the project money to purchase trees and have them installed back into the islands. Uh, Restriping of the parking spots, and I saw, talked about the widening of the main entrance. Here's some pictures that give you a visual of the scope of the work. And you can see the what's highlighted in green and in in uh, white is talking about what they would do uh, in each of those areas. The darker green is the parking spaces. The lighter green is are the drive lanes. So it shows is milling, how much he's going to mill out, and what he's going to lay down in there. So you can see there's our patch up in the corner on the Gorman Drive entrance. There's our overlay that's going into the preschool drive around. Um, so it's the, it's the entire parking lot uh, associated with the 1984 expansion with a few items that were associated with uh, the more recent uh, building of the preschool addition. And this is the, you get a, a feel for the amount of concrete work. That there. That's the, LF means linear feet. So add all those up is the amount of linear foot, feet of new curbing that has to go in and old curbing that's got to come out and be disposed of. Uh, one thing I'll point out to on the, um, down from the lower left there, that yellow rectangle, is uh, currently it's a handicapped um, concrete which is lowered to the current elevation of the asphalt. The new asphalt level is going to be higher there, so they have to take that out and put a full height concrete pad in that. So that's what that concrete work is, but that allow us to raise the elevation starting at that point and then slope it downward so we get it down to the uh, uh, drains that collect it at Boonesboro Road. And one thing I wanted to mention is that this is the uh, this is a turnkey project. So the contractor that does the paving has all the pieces in order to complete the job as I just went over that scope. We'll have to go out, for, the next step is to go out for bids and get current pricing, current schedules, when can they do the work, and reaffirm the duration of the work. Uh, we expect the duration to be somewhere in the seven to ten days and not interrupt uh, our need for our uh, parking. Um, they will work work with our schedule for our services. We, we will find out when they can do it. Uh, 
We know that they start shutting down operations in November, late October, November for the winter time, and they don't start back up until January, maybe get full swing uh, in March. So we'll have to find out what openings they have in their schedule in order to be able to uh, help us do anything that we need to do to work with that schedule. If you have any questions um, of me from the presentation or the committee, uh, please route those through the main office email and we'll get back to you as soon as possible with the answers. And um, as I said, this is a project, so it's going to need to be funding. So we appreciate your generosity. Thank you.